Hey, what it do? What it do? What it do? Y'all, happy Thursday, man. I hope y'all are excited. I'm freaking excited. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Ducky, thanks for the T1 subby fam. Chat, welcome into the on Q Esports uh, pilot episode, y'all. Happy Thursday, man. It's been something I've been thinking about doing kind of over the course of uh, really the off season, but I didn't really know how I wanted to go about it. We were kind of busy with some like castings and stuff like that. Um, news kind of was coming out like spotty hit and miss all over the place. So I didn't really want to, um, didn't know how I kind of want to go about all that. Plus there for a while, I was also busy with the PSQ videos. Um, Got to figure out how I want to do the TLDR videos for the upcoming season. I uh, got to do a quick two, man. We got ALGS starting up this weekend. RLCS starting up next weekend. We got VCT starting here in a month. Um, we'll probably peek in on some other titles here as well. Um, kind of as things come up. I, you know, if there's titles that I don't watch too much of, like I'm going to be honest, we're not going to talk too much CS. Uh, we're not going to talk too much League of Legends. I might like bring people in as like bigger events are coming up and stuff and have them kind of at least give us like an idea of what's going on. Uh, that way for our viewers to like do tune in and watch multiple esports like your boy. Uh, if League of Legends is your thing or, you know, if we have like a Warzone event coming up, we got a couple of Warzone homies in our network. Uh, we'll bring them in in chat. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we'll kind of be sticking to the stuff that your boy makes content around, the stuff that your boy casts, um, you know, in some way, shape or form. So we're going to be watching a lot of ALGS, a lot of RLCS and a lot of VCT. Whenever Overwatch does start up, we may incorporate that. I'm not 100% sure. Obviously, Overwatch League right now being shut down. Uh, and they're looking at kind of doing some other form of, like, competitive for Overwatch. Uh, so whenever that time does come, you know, we'll, we'll obviously look at that. Uh, but this is something I wanted to put together uh, as far as for, like, a uh, wraparound for esports. So on Q Esports, right now we'll probably start off with doing it once a week i was thinking i might want to try and do this twice a week i like to do it once at the beginning of the week to kind of recap the last weekend's worth of events and then do it again at the end of the week to kind of talk about the weekend's like worth of stuff coming up um i'm gonna be honest with like the first couple of weeks i kind of want to see how stuff's going so we'll probably only do it once a week which means we'll either still do it on thursday nights which if we were to go to twice a week, we'd probably do Monday nights and Thursday nights. I think would probably be the best way to do it. Um, but as for now, we'll probably just start off doing it on Thursdays, man. So if you're watching this thing, whether you're watching it live or you're watching over on YouTube after the fact, because we are going to post everything up over there. And we're also going to be posting the audio version up on uh, wherever you can get your audio podcasts at as well. So if you're um, catching this out for the fact, if you can do me a favor, whether you're on YouTube, you know, do the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, um, leave in a review, whether it's on Spotify or anything like that, you'd be really help your boy out. Also make sure you're telling somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody about it. Like I said, we'll be back here every week. Um, I've got some ideas for some things I want to do. I think it'd be kind of cool at the end of every episode to maybe do like a, uh, like imagine like a radio sports car uh, sports show where like you can have like callers call in do that just using our discord um i think if we were to do twice a week maybe on the week where we're he bring, heading into like the weekend's worth of event maybe bring people in for an interview for like 20 30 minutes too as well i don't know i got a lot of ideas if you got ideas for the podcast obviously feel free to let me know in the uh comments wherever you're watching this after the fact probably not so much during the fact uh if you got ideas during the fact let me know like um in the discord and stuff like that as well always you can use the exclamation point discord and chat get you into the discord best place to kind of keep up with things also a good place to kind of meet some new friends play some games and things like that because we do have that going on in the community all right um but this was something i didn't really want to rush so i'm glad we're kind of getting into the end of esports winter like i said algs starting this weekend i figured it'd be the perfect time to get down and do what it do right uh, if you haven't been keeping up with the plq videos first off do me a favor and kind of when you got some time, peep those things out over on YouTube. Uh, something I've been really having a lot of fun doing. As some of y'all may remember, I started doing the TLDR series back during championship time for RLCS, VCT, ALGS. It's something I thought really seemed to kind of connect. I had a lot of fun doing them. Um, but obviously by starting it, 
during championship season. Um, uh, they didn't really have much going on after that fact. So we started with the PLQ. So there is kind of filling y'all in on that. I didn't do anything for APAC North because I couldn't find any English coverage. Uh, there is going to be some English coverage of the APAC North region, which we will be watching uh, and also kind of using that for content. But I just didn't want to like, I was already really, I'm going to be honest with you. I was already really, really uh, crunched for time doing the three videos a week during uh, Pro League qualifiers, which makes me think I'm going to have to find some way to kind of condense that down to one video, but we'll kind of figure that out along the way here, right? Um, but this weekend, this weekend, um, there it is. Um, so we're going to be doing watch parties over here for at least for sure both of the Apex. I may already be working on the video come like Sunday. So we'll see about um, EMEA in North America. But APAC South starts tomorrow, or if you're watching this or hearing this after the fact, which means you'll be hearing or watching this on a Friday. It's Friday night, uh, 11 p.m. Uh, so we're going to be over here watching that. This weekend is only a single session, which is kind of nice. So we get to kind of do a little teaser this weekend, kind of test out the just six games. Because uh, as you can see here, in future weeks, at least when they have uh, matches, it's all double sessions, right? So Friday into Saturday, the 26th and 27th. Uh, then the following weekend, the 2nd and 3rd. Um, then my birthday weekend, the 10th and 11th. And then after that weekend on the 11th, they're actually taking like a month break because uh, that's when they've got the new season releasing and stuff, right? So obviously they're going to give the teams time to kind of, you know, um, test everything out, figure out if there's a meta shift, things like that. Uh, which is kind of convenient because that's going to be right around the time that this, that VCT starts. But yeah, so we'll be here Friday night at 11 for APAC South. APAC North is Saturday going into Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Again, same sort of deal. Normally, it's going to be double headers. This time around, it's only the six games going to be A versus B. Both of these are actually should be... Um, you don't have the teams here? Oh. Uh, both of them are, are pretty stacked lobbies. A lot of the heavy hitters that should be fun to watch. And then Sunday, we've got 1 and 6, right? So um, 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. We'll either be live watching both here and on YouTube. Um, kind of like we're going to be doing with watch parties all season long. Um, or we might just be doing a watch party in Discord while I'm already working on the video. I have to kind of figure out, again, I still haven't completely figured out as far as how I want to uh, go into the season with the TLDR series. I feel like four videos is going to be too much for me to do, especially once RLCS starts up the following uh, week. Uh, and then also especially too once TEC starts up um, for the spring semester so. Uh, I'm kind of wanting to get everything in line for that. Um, but we'll definitely be back for that. Also, we just got an announcement yesterday. Let me find this here. Because um, I originally wanted to talk about the fact that we have... We had two of our teams. Um... Two of our teams that are in the ALGS partner program for year four are actually um, had, had not announced their roster. Now, part of that has changed. Part of that is with Disguised. Um, and I don't think this was really a surprise to many people picking up the, the Timmy roster from the dojo. Yo, what up, Broken? How you doing, homie? Uh, so you got Timmy, Designful, Enemy. Going to be playing under the... the um, DSG banner. I feel like with the connection between Timmy and Valorant, I feel like this should have been the obvious team that was going to be getting picked up, right? Um, I just realized. Oh, you know what? Because this is the wrong tab. I just realized that. There we go. That way I can get rid of my toolbar on the bottom. Yo, broken. I've been good, fam. Been good. 
Uh, but I was kind of, you know, when I was thinking about the fact that we're going into year four for ALGS, right? And this is the first year that they announced the partner program. And we had, when I was talking about this earlier in the week, both DSG and FaZe have still yet to sign squads. Now, DSG obviously just announced yesterday. I don't know why the week. Um, if I had to guess, it's just about when the team's contract starts. Because, I mean, it's just they're starting it the week before um, the actual season itself. So I'm guessing that's probably just part of it within technicalities. But you could even say the same thing about LG. LG just announced picking up um, their squad. What was it? Thursday last week? Would that be right, chat? Wednesday? Thursday? The 11th? Yeah, so last Thursday. Um, which I feel like also made a lot of sense. I think if people were paying attention to the offseason, Luminosity made sense for... Sweet, we've been seeing that Luminosity is one of the organizations that has been really more growing as opposed to not, right? Um, during a time where in a lot of esports, a lot of organizations are either downsizing their esports or even just completely shutting their doors. Luminosity has still been picking up creators, um, getting into more esports. One of their big things is that content and key, so like Sweet made sense there. Dojo made sense for DSG. The only thing that we don't have uh, yet for um, dude, we don't have the teams here either. Oh, come on, fam. Um, the only te the team that we don't have an, uh, a roster yet for officially is FaZe. And it's just strange to me that you have a team that is a part of your partner program for ALGS and you still don't have a roster. I don't know. It just doesn't sit right with me, honestly. Like, just like it didn't sit right with me with, like, LG and DSG waiting till the end. Like, part of esports is having stories to be able to build and be able to sell to the fans and stuff. It's just, it's already hard enough to do that in esports, especially in ALGS, like this offseason we saw, right, where you have roster moves everywhere. I mean, you look over at EU, all of the like OG duos are, are all separated now. Um, a lot of rosters breaking apart in NA as well. Um, I don't know. I feel like EMEA should definitely be interesting. NA will be fun to watch. Also in NA, you got Moist coming over to NA in case you haven't been uh, kind of keeping up with the off-season stuff for ALGS. Um, one thing that is interesting, Moist is actually having to, for now, play out Split 1 in Canada. They were having some visa issues. Um, so they are originally planning on living down at the Moist house in Florida. Uh, but for now, we're spending time up in good old warm Canada during the warmest part of the year. So um, should be interested to see how that plays out. I wonder how that um, kind of affects things during the first half of Split 1. They seem to have been doing pretty good during Split scrims um but obviously you know it, it's scrims take that with a, a grain of salt right um but i i feel like moist we've seen them obviously be very consistent in the past when they only were playing against you know na and international competition a handful of times a year i feel like their squad with the pickup of uh sykes is, it's like it's just it's a dominant squad man i, I don't know if there's going to be a team that has the ability to really put up with that firepower. There aren't many teams that can do that consistently. That's one thing that Moist is like extremely good at. Um, what do you mean, Kitty? What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Max. That's my co-catster. We'll probably see him quite a bit on the uh, the podcast. He likes to hang out with your boy. Um. What else do I want to... Oh, also there is the announcement here recently about the um, Asia Festival for Apex Legends, which is pretty cool. Um, mostly going to be Pacific teams that are attending that and playing in it, but Alliance and TSM, uh, I think the two teams that you can arguably say are the biggest teams from EMEA and NA, 
are also going to be in attendance. They've got Greek and Nicewig going to be there for the NA broadcasting, which is really, really cool. When they announced the um, Asia Festival last month, we saw some people from EA saying that there are going to be some uh, some big things from EA as far as that weekend. So I wonder if they're looking at announcing a Pacific LAN. It feels like Pacific's definitely due for a LAN. Um, not EA, but like people who work for EA. Um, I think I've seen Cheyenne in particular. He's one of the ones that Wig's always talking about. He works with him on the B stream. Um, saying there'd be some there they they had some stuff up their sleeves. So it should be interesting. Uh, also, when you talk about just more like ALGS, not even just ALGS, but like competitive a uh, Apex coming around. Tempo also uh, mentioned recently on one of his streams that Oversight is looking to come back. Remember, Oversight was one of the um Oversight was like one of the third party tournaments that was one of the last ones to kind of hang around last season. Uh, with them coming back, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, more competitive Apex, the better. Uh, I know, I, I think they're having issues with funding before. I thought there had been rumors in the past that Oversight and Wig were going to be working together, and then I don't know if that fell through or if that's just how it's coming back this year. Um, it. Tempo didn't really give us much information, but that was mentioned, so I think that's really cool. So plenty of competitive Apex coming up here in the coming months. Uh, we will have the new season dropping in uh, next month in February. Again, so they'll be taking that a little bit of a break for ALGS. Um, but once we get back going even in from that, we'll be going for pretty well through mid-March, I believe it is. Um, yeah, regionals for... APAC are the 10th and 9th, and then NA and EU are on the 17th. So those two weekends in the middle of March is when we'll be seeing uh, Split 1 come to a close. I don't think we've actually got an announcement for even land. No, we do have land date announcements, right? We just don't know where it is. Hold on. Stand by. Let me double check that. So I feel like we should know, right? Playoffs. Playoffs? No, it just says June. Um, but again, it does look like we'll have at least kind of between the three esports we'll mostly be talking about, ALGS, RLCS, and VCT, the break in between kind of the, the, the we'll be able to you mostly be paying attention to two at a time, I do believe. Also, the broadcast team got announced yesterday. Um, bringing back everybody. But I think the thing that was really intriguing to see was that the weekly broadcast are going to include more talent. Um, Genome's adding, getting added on. Uh, Parallax Stella's getting added on. Now, obviously, Genome was normally on for, like, the lands and stuff and does the long shot uh, broadcast of the APAC South broadcast, but now going to be doing NA and EMEA. Um, Parallax, we, they got, of course, uh, Glitter coming back, Dia, Zephyr, Tiff, Rain Day, Onset, Gaskin. I think that's the full broadcast crew. Um, so good news for people who had kind of been paying attention within the industry, seeing that the whole broadcast crew is back, because unfortunately over an RLCS, uh, that's not the case. Um, we've at least seen, I think it's like five or six of the usual... Uh, RLCS talent not get retained for the upcoming season. Of course, RLCS is a little bit different because um, it's gotten changed from being ran by Epic and Psionics as far as the tournament organization. It's now going to be ran by Blast. Um, Blast being the guys that, you know, for those who watch CS, y'all know Blast. They usually put on really good shows. Um, but lots of changes coming on RLCS side. Now, RLCS starts not this weekend, but the following weekend. Um, but this season, all the broadcasts are going to, or all of the regions play the same weekend. Whereas, like, in the past, you had, like, um, I think AC OCE and APAC were different weekends, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, NA and EMEA were different weekends. Uh, so they can kind of stagger the broadcast so nobody was competing with one another. Um, 
So the bad news is now on Friday and Saturday, the regions are going to be competing against one another. I think the kind of cool thing with it is now on Championship Sunday for like your hardcore fans. You can watch RLCS from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep and you're watching like top four for, for any region. You know, for like somebody like me, when I wake up and after I go to the gym, like I can get home and watch like the end of OCE or APAC. Um, and then we'll probably start, you know, like Mina and then SSA. Uh, we'll start like early or late morning, early afternoon, then EU, NA. So I think like that will be like a cool experience. Um... I think that whole experience will be cool, right? Um, it's interesting to see them having it compete against one another. I don't know. Um, also, the other thing that they announced was they expanded the prize pool, which sounds cool in theory, right? Like more people getting paid. Hopefully that has more people getting interested in the eSport. Um, but like they took a decent chunk of money from like your top earners and you're like getting into like the top 128 teams in e, uh, in NA and EMEA, or sorry, EU for that, because it's not EMEA, it's just EU. Um, a lot of talent's not happy about it. You're paying less. There's only two splits versus three. Um, I think the broadcast themselves are the the talent itself. Like as far as within RLCS, like I think the season's going to be really good. Um. I think it's just going to be about time, about like like letting things play out because now there's no wild card at the end of the season. <clears throat> um, Moon, I see you're asking about crowdfunding with Skinny. You're talking about for uh, RLCS teams get a split of a uh, uh, split of like their skin revenue. I do believe yes, but it's not like they do like VZT where they have the big bundle. Um, where it goes towards like the full pot, like VCT. Oh, Apex, man, they talked about doing the skins at um, Champs back for year two, and then it never came to fruition. Um, I think they're having problems with splits. I for if I'm if I'm not mistaken, part of the issues with the skins for Apex was figuring out like what, um. Orgs, we're going to have what skins for what, like, weapons. Um, but that is kind of a lot to do with so many teams we've seen kind of leave the Apex scene from year two ending through year three, right? Like, we've seen a lot of orgs leaving, and part of it was financial support. And... and so not to go back too far back into what we were talking about with the ALGS, but I, I think, again, it's a point to kind of focus on, <clears throat> or at least it's worth mentioning, is this is the first year they've had the partner program, right? They announced, I think it was like 12 teams um, that were going to be getting like financial support and stuff and were partner programs are going to have booths or they get to have booths at all the lands and stuff like that. Um but we had three teams that were still weren't announced two weeks out. I don't know. I just feel like it's a, it's overall, it feels like the, like, I don't know if, if anyone outside the program knows exactly what the program entails. Um, but I mean, we see people seem to be confident about it. <clears throat> Sweet talked about it before he got picked up. Cause obviously, you know, being in talks with things. Oh, and talk about, I might have to do a video on the whole sweet off season things. Maybe see if I can get an interview with him. It was really interesting seeing him kind of breaking down all the options he had. Um, apparently one org was talking about swooping him and uh, his squad up and just dropping their roster and not even really talking their like those kind of like behind their team's back. It was intriguing. Uh, but business, you know what I mean? It's a business. Other changes that came to RLCS, because those were just announced. Um, now teams no longer have to live in the region that they're competing in. Which is going to be interesting because you had like newer regions like SSA in the past where you actually had teams who were thinking about relocating for a split. Um, now all they have to do is just sign up 
and they can only play in one region, they can they can play out of it. I'll be interested to see how many teams try and loophole that, especially some of the smaller regions. Especially say for now SSA who get it like a guaranteed spot in their region. Which is one thing that changed this year was kind of the seeding of things. It does unfortunately mean with both SSA getting a spot and Mina getting an additional spot that both NA and EMEA now have four spots instead of five. I feel like they probably could have extended the like the field a little bit, but um, I think we were seeing a lot of like what we normally see, or not not normally see, but what we've been normally like typically seeing this year in the uh, off season, which is just I mean. It's eSport winter, man. The the COVID bubble finally popped from all that money. Um, the funny money, you know what I mean? Um, that's why RLCS is pulling back their pool. Um, probably paying less. If I had to guess, part of the reason why they're retaining less talent is that they're just downsizing their talents of like their uh, broadcast size, right? But speaking of funny money, um, TSM is actually rumored to be getting back into RLCS. They were in it for a while back in the day. They haven't been in RLCS. I think they left RLCS. I don't think they were in RLCS at all last split. I don't think. Let me check that now, now that I'm actually saying that, because I don't want to be wrong. Um... Have they not been in it since 2020? Oh, they haven't been around since like back in the day, back in the day. Um, but TSM is uh, picking up the Hey. Well, it's rumored that they're picking up the Hey Bro roster. Um, it hasn't officially been announced, but like it's one of those things where like everybody knows that it just hasn't been officially announced, sort of deal. Um, which is interesting because TSM was at one point looking to halt their eSport division. It looked like the only team that they were retaining at that time was the ALGS roster. Now they're picking up RLCS. So kind of interesting. One thing with the shorter, more compact uh, RLCS schedule is it's rumored that there's going to be more third-party tournaments for RLCS as well, which means more tournaments. I'm all for that. I think that's really cool. Um, I wish I could tune in even to more like CRL and like College Rocket League, man, because uh, Collegiate Rocket League is pretty booming right now as well. Um, might be something I'm going to have to try and get my hands on. No, I was saying earlier, I haven't heard anything on Overwatch, but we'll definitely be uh, keeping an eye out for Overwatch. I think that's something I'm going to be watching whenever we they figure out a league or something. Um, but yeah, so I'm not sure as far as what we're going to do starting next weekend for those couple of weekends that we have. What, it's the last weekend of January? So the 27th, 28th? The 3rd, the 4th of February, and the 10th and the 11th, those three weekends, we're going to have both ALGS and RLCS going on the weekend. Um, we'll have to figure out how we're prioritizing our time. A lot of this year is going to be kind of figuring things out or like kind of dividing out time and figuring out how, like, what we're going to be spending where. So I appreciate you guys' patience with that. All right. Um, I feel like I do want to more so focus on RLCS and ALGS. I feel like with where my casting has been going recently, RLCS is kind of where I've been getting a lot more motion with that. So I feel like I should probably also focus my journalistic style content over there. But also the ALGS content's kind of been get, picking up and getting some attention from both broadcast folks and other people who do content in uh the algs scene uh so those will probably be the two that we mo mainly focus on but i also don't want to like not focus on vct because i really enjoy vct um and the vct videos did pretty good last year too so i don't know man 
I always obviously open up for uh, your guys' ideas on that, kind of like I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, I'm always open to ideas. Definitely feel free to join the Discord. I should probably actually open up just like a section in the Discord um, for questions even and things like that. That way we can answer during the podcast. Might not be a bad idea. Um, but I talked about wanting to kind of wrap this thing up in a half hour, hour or so. Let's go over VCT real quick. We're not going to talk VCT too much because we still have about a month until VCT does start. Um, like I mentioned earlier, luckily VCT is going to be um, starting during the break time for ALGS. So as far as for us, we can kind of take some time to kind of pay attention to it. Right? Um. But this season should be wild. EG, first off, the whole story of EG is freaking insane. Um, the whole comeback, like the whole like comeback of their men's squad, their Game Changer squad is kind of like getting on the map towards the end of Game Changer scene. Um, and then just the whole org imploding, not just the Valorant side, but everything. Um, like they don't, they didn't have champ shirts. Yeah. Yeah, Moon. Yeah, they didn't have champ shirts. It's, it's wild, man. Um, there is the whole thing that even like the one shirt design they had was missing a player's name. Um, for an eSport org that has long been synonymous with like North American eSports. Um, a wild, like wild ride for the ending of it all. I think the biggest thing for me is the way we've seen like their roster um kind of get dismantled here in between splits um it makes me it like i often think this but like i feel like the esports industry needs to unionize and i don't know your guys' thoughts on that feel free to let me know down in the comments below um or in chat if y'all are in here live but like there's the players association but even the players association like kind of sat by and was like just watching it happen they sat in contract jail for what two three almost four months would that be right um and i th I, I honestly think that we are going to see that the americas i would probably say as a whole is going to suffer at the t1 level because of everything with EG. Like, we have, what, three rosters that just made some pretty significant moves? G kind of picking up the pieces from EG, right? You figure um, NRG, uh, Leviathan. Although Leviathan had already technically had some roster changes, but they had already had some roster changes, so it kind of got getting used to the thing. And um, where'd the last one go? Sentinels. Um, so teams are like only just now getting their teams together. I guess there is still a full month. A month is a decent amount of time, but I don't know. Also, who do you guys think won the off season? Um, I know people think Sentinels look decent. I, I, it's hard for me to buy into Sentinels, man. I think the up and down track record is extremely hard for me to forget. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like NRG on paper is probably like the winners of the off season and probably have like the highest ceiling, but we so time so many times in esports we like we know that it's not just about getting the best players in like each position or each role in this case and like that they should be able to perform. Like, it's not always about that. Sometimes it's about the uh, cohesion and chemistry. I mean, even look at Leviathan. Like, I think before Leviathan picked up Calm, a lot of people thought Leviathan already won the offseason. And then there were rumors that Aspas was already having um, internal issues and was, like, wanting to leave already. Like, I don't know. I feel like Lev's either going to do really, really good or really, really bad. 
They're going to be a heck of a story either way. Um, but I feel like probably your potentially your top three is probably NRG, Sentinels, Leviathan. I'd probably start probably say Sentinels in third, Leviathan second, NRG third. Uh, C9's also looking pretty solid. You are correct on that, Moon. Um, of course, Loud still looks pretty solid. Like, yeah, you lost uh, Aspos, but you still got Sadek. You got some pretty good uh, other pieces on that team. Um, I mean, unfortunately, you still got people like Crew who still have a huge question mark. Even 100 Thieves kind of a huge question mark. But I feel like it's fair to have a couple of question marks in your league. I think the thing that's weird is EG still has Jogamo. They released a rumored like roster. But the thing that I kept reading was this is going to be their roster if EG is still in DCT. And again, it just goes back to like this whole implosion for EG. It's just so weird to me. Like, how are you all of a sudden... I remember there was all those worries about the guard before it became G2. G2, another team that I actually think will probably do pretty well this year. Um, I don't think they will. I, I don't think they're going to make like every land. I, I think probably a team that will do better in the back half of the year. But um, there was all that worry about, oh, well, we can't have just one league, only have 10 teams, and the other leagues have 11. I like, guess the whole reason that. The Chinese leagues, had, like they had their whole weird off season <laughs> where they did, they like put together a super condensed ascension so they could also have 11 teams. And now all of a sudden they're just EG who's like, eh, we might play this year. I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. It's weird. It's not a good look. And it sucks because, like, I feel like DCT has the potential to be such a long-standing league. I mean, look at CS, right? CS has been one of those staples in esports for years. And personally, I think Valorant's a little bit more entertaining to watch. It's essentially the same stuff, um, just with a little bit of it, more, more layers, as uh, the homie Moon would like to say. Um... I don't know. We do get challengers for VCT. I think the first um, set of qualifiers for that is not next week, but the week after. Um, we'll have to kind of see what the schedule's looking like um, as far as Casting, although for casting, we won't be at TEC just quite yet. So our weekdays should be all right. Um, but also, you know, obviously at that point, we're going to be in full swing with ALGS and RLCS. Um, but we might do some watch partying of challengers. That might be something we just more do watch parties in Discord while I'm working on videos. Um, but we'll have to see. Um, yeah, I see you mentioned the incentive for challengers team, and that's true. There is not a, a real big incentive. In, I mean, what, in NA we have two? Three? Three. Um, especially since DSG is now going to Pacific? One of the Pacific um, challengers leagues? Um, but there's MAD... Moist and oxygen. And who were the two teams, two tier two teams that were at the Ludwig Tarek Invitational? Wasn't it Oxygen and Mo or in Moist? And they finished top two. Looks pretty solid. Um, but we'll probably not be watching, or we probably won't be focusing too much on VCT the next couple weeks. Again, just because we have ALGS this week and RLCS kicking off next week. But once VCT is in it, we will definitely be paying. Uh, a little bit of attention on both of those over here. 
And I'm kind of realizing as I'm yapping, guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to condense this down to a 30-minute podcast. We might be able to aim for an hour. So sorry for setting that um, very awful expectation early. <laughs> we don't even have results to talk about yet. We aren't doing pick this this uh, um, this week. So just something to kind of keep in mind for future weeks. Again, the next couple of weeks of the podcast are kind of going to be a learning experience. I do think I would like to start to build up to a, um, where we have like a call in and ask questions section of the podcast using discord, um, bringing in guests to talk about certain leagues and stuff. Um, I would like to be able to build it up to more of an hour and a half, two hour sort of podcasting as we get into it. But obviously uh, it's going to be a process from there. Um, Otherwise, though, there's not much really going on as far as esports that I'm aware of. Um, one guilty pleasure of mine when it comes to esports that we'll at least be talking about a little bit over here uh, when it comes to the podcast. And for those of y'all in the Discord, um, y'all know I, I watched a little bit of it last year as well as the NBA 2K League. Um, the NBA 2K League just had its draft last weekend. Got to see some international talent getting picked up this year, which I think is huge, especially now that um, the 2K League is partnered with uh, FIBA, they just had like the whole um, like FIBA World Cup thing this past summer. Um, so that should be really fun to kind of see. Man, I, Moon, I know you're in chat. Bro, you got to come with me to a 2K event this year. The, the atmosphere is dope. Especially for hoopers, gamers, it's, it's lit. Um... But I think that should just about do it as far as for things for now. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm thinking about anything or if I'm missing anything for like preseason heading into the new week, our first week of ALGS. Uh, if y'all haven't, again, if y'all haven't watched the TLDR videos. Ducky, are you, I mean, if you, if you want to make the trip down here, you're more than welcome to. It's just, he lives like down where, down by like the two, like where the 2K league's at. But you're more than welcome to join us for, for a 2K league uh, weekend. That could be fun. So yeah, I haven't figured out how we're going to be doing the TLDR video for the actual end season. I know I was doing like a video for per region for um, the PLQs. I think that was what made me realize I don't want to do that for the regular season, especially once we get into that and uh, RLCS. Uh, so let's make this quick, wrap this up so I can actually use this instead of having to do a whole other recording as far as for uh, the outro here. But let's go and wrap things up since we're having some technical difficulties. And again, uh, for some reason, I forgot to record and stream instead of we're just streaming here uh first time through we're gonna have some learnings uh curves some hiccups uh, but i appreciate for uh those of y'all coming through and hanging out during the live portion uh ducky moon in particular who are hanging out and chatting quite a bit i want to kind of make this a more of an interactive podcast in the future also we had new uh new mecha gaming in here earlier as well broken anarchist too so appreciate you guys for coming in and checking out the first podcast for all of y'all watching after the fact whether it's on youtube or even if you're just watching or if you're just listening to the audio version, whether it be on Spotify or all the other um, podcast platforms, do me a favor, leave a comment, leave a review, let them know that you loved it. Um, help your boy out. Tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody about it. Get involved in the discord. That's going to be down in the description below as well. And so we catch y'all back here for the next episode, episode two of on Q esports, man. Don't forget. With everything crazy going on in the world today, be true, be you, be sincere. Game hard and love hard, all right, y'all? It's your boy Q. Don't forget we all watch parties this weekend. Peace.